Hello everyone, Nabil here from Impact Soundworks presenting the fourth episode in our Shredded 3 Masterclass tutorial series. In this part, we'll be looking at the new features introduced in Shredditch 3 aimed at facilitating rich harmonic writing for virtual guitars with minimal fuss, whether it be melodic parts or full-on chordal rhythm sections. For this topic, we'll be using Shredditch 3 Stratus in order to show the more dynamic tones that the Shredditch 3 series has to offer. However, all of these features operate identically in every Shredditch 3 product, including our basses, so feel free to follow along with whatever guitar you have at the ready. If you haven't yet purchased one, you can always download the free version of Stratus, which includes 12 frets of range and the minimum necessary articulations for melodies and accompaniment. Let's get started. To review, we can play simple melodic material with Shredditch 3 as always. <laughs> As mentioned in episode 1, the poly input knob controls the look ahead window introduced to capture multiple notes within a snapshot of time. Once the notes are registered as a poly input, the engine will find the ideal fret voicing for the notes relative to the current virtual hand position. Here's the same riffing with some thirds mixed in to add some color. As a reminder, strum on poly input is available depending if we'd like the notes in the voicing to be strummed in physical succession or played together like in hybrid or finger style. Poly inputs also register with legato articulations like hammer-ons and slides. When playing poly inputs and triggering hammer-ons or slides, the fret algorithm will modify its selection to play the new voicing on the currently playing strings. With this, we see it's trivially easy to create harmonic tapping riffs and chord slides. Now with that, we've already added a whole new dimension to the operating capacity of our virtual guitars. Let's try crafting a solo guitar passage, complete with melody and self-accompaniment, to demonstrate the simplicity of polyphonic writing in a single Shredditch 3 instrument, with no additional programming required. <laughs> Of course, we could also use poly input to simply lay down a super easy bed of chords right out of the box for use in other mixes. Now you might have noticed that in these midis I'm stopping the chords before the measures where the chords change. This is because a guitarist needs time to transition from chord to chord. The release notices generated by stopping the chord early is what creates authenticity in the performance. If you find that when you write chord parts they sound a little sterile or flat, this is one of the easiest ways to fix that. Poly input can also be used with our strumming and string picking keys, which we'll cover next as we introduce the strumming mode. Here's a quick example to demonstrate what I mean before getting into how it works. As our engine allows you to control strum speed using velocity or CC, you want to manually make sure each and every strum in your MIDI part is offset to where it sounds best and locked together with the rest of the song. The overall design is engineered to allow the writing of rhythm parts without engaging strumming mode, or in other words, without committing the instrument to a deliberate accompaniment role. It is currently the most powerful intuitive system of playing guitar across the spectrum, from melody to harmony, without messing with playback modes or parameter automation. However, strumming mode can be advantageous when you want absolute programmatic control over the performance, so that's what we'll discuss next. The first thing you'll notice is that MIDI note input no longer creates any sound. Instead, notes played simultaneously are placed on the fretboard in real time to create the most ideal voicing in any given combination. In order to play the voicings, we have a variety of methods at our disposal. 
If you look at the top of the playable range, you'll see an assortment of colored key switches. The first two are latching and non-latching key switches for turning strumming mode on and off, which we'll ignore for now. The keys beyond grant the ability to strum the chord voicing up or down and with partial variance. Partial variance of up and down will only strum a portion of the strings depending on the strum distance parameter, which we'll cover in a bit. The following two keys can be used to turn your strums into muted strums or choke strums. This is a new feature introduced in version 1.2 of Shredders 3. The teal key range above the strum keys are designed for picking individual strings, which opens up another dimension of harmony writing. With this key set, you can write a static MIDI pattern arpeggiating a chord while changing that chord in the playable range. The MIDI pattern continues to play the relevant voice notes. In the event you pick a string that doesn't have a note voiced on it, the system will substitute another string to play. Try it with the sustain pedal, lifting the pedal before chord changes. By default, the mapping for strum parameters are as follows. Speed and volume are controlled by velocity, while distance is controlled by CC1, the mod wheel. You can reassign the mapping however fits your workflow, as depending on the song, you may want to control speed separately from volume or play shorter distance strums on softer velocities. If you intend to use the default mapping of CC1 for strum distance, you want to move vibrato to aftertouch so that it doesn't engage while you're trying to control the strum distance. Moving on, the strum audition modes essentially restore note playback when pressing notes in the playable range. This can be useful for working out your chord parts before programming them into the MIDI editor, as you can hear what the chords sound like with instant feedback. The option New Note will play the corresponding note for every key you press, whereas the option All Notes will play the entire voicing on every key. This is so you can hear the exact tone of the chord based on how it's voiced across the strings. <laughs> Now, you'll want to turn off Strum Audition when prepping the track for your song, as the notes generated are not tracked in Shredders 3's virtual guitar algorithm. Many features dealing with string algorithm realism and other performance parameters will not function correctly specifically for any voices played by Strum Audition. That wraps up the fourth entry in the Shredders 3 Masterclass tutorial series. As always, we include all midis and instructions in the description below. Remember to subscribe to this channel for future topics on writing and producing with Shredders 3. Yeah!